In order to graph a sine or a cosine function that has uh, an h value or a phase shift with it, I'm going to begin the same way we've always done, by figuring out a few key aspects about my graph. For example, I know the amplitude of this uh, sine wave is going to be 3. Uh, I know that the period is going to be 2 pi divided by the b value, uh, which in this case is 2. Uh, so that would simplify down to just a period of pi. And then uh, I, I know it's not reflected. I know that there's no vertical shift because there's no k value adding uh, at the end of this. Uh, so the only other thing then is the new part of this, which is the phase shift. To find the phase shift, you're going to take the h value, uh, and you may call it something different, but uh, the number being added or subtracted in the parentheses, so in this case pi, and divide that by the b value, so uh, which again is still 2, and then simplify if you can. So my phase shift is going to be pi over 2, and now notice it's the opposite of the sign that I have here, so that negative sign is actually going to uh, move my graph to the right. Uh, pi over two spaces. So that's the information I'm going to need to start graphing this. And if you need help with that basic stuff, then uh, I'd go back and watch one of my regular sign videos. So to do this, the way I'm going to do this at least, is I'm going to start with sort of what I call a rough draft of what my uh, graph would look like. So for example, I know my x-axis would normally begin at zero, and then it would normally end at the period, which we said was pi. And then finding our uh, five key points, our three other key points, I need the halfway point, so that's pi over two. I need half of the halfway point, so pi over four. And I would need three quarters of the way, which would be three pi over four. And again, if you need help with finding those, watch one of my previous videos. Uh, what's unusual and where the phase shift is now going to come into play is that all five of those key points need to be adjusted. They need to specifically be adjusted using my phase shift. So what I'm going to do is take all five of those values and add to them because I'm moving to the right. I'm going to add uh, pi over two to each one of them to find out where these new points would be located on my new final uh, draft of my uh, graph. So let me go ahead and get that one started. Oops, I actually don't want to draw that yet. I'm going to draw in my x-axis. And again, I'm just going to take each of the five uh, values I had before and add pi over 2 to them. So using a calculator, if I don't want to worry about um, common denominators and all that stuff, well, that first point's easy. It's just um, 0 plus pi over 2 is pi over 2. Uh, pi over 4 plus pi over 2 is 3 pi over 4. And again, if I was using my calculator, I would just add 1 fourth plus 1 half and then throw the pi symbol back on it. Uh, my next point on my rough draft was pi over 2. So adding my phase shift to that, pi over 2 plus pi over 2 is 1 pi. And I will continue on down the line just adding uh, pi, or adding uh, pi over 2 to each of my original values. So 5 pi over 4. And finally, I ended up at pi over 3. And again, you can use a calculator and double check all that, but uh, that's what we have. Uh, now what I'm going to do is figure out where my y-axis would be located. Well, I can see that uh, my points are getting bigger this way, of course. So my y-axis is actually somewhere back here, and so there's different ways to do it. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do that symbol to indicate there's like a break in the graph. And um, I mean, there's better ways to do it, there's more accurate ways to do it, but that's all I really care about. We don't, I don't care about being super accurate, so I'm going to do that. If you need to actually find where that is, then go ahead and continue this pattern and figure out where the y-axis would be. But I'm going to do that, just to have a break in the graph. Now, sometimes your y-axis may be over here, sometimes it may be somewhere in the middle, so we do want to take that into account. Uh, anyway, I'm going to finish this the same way I'd always finish a sine function. So the amplitude is 3, so I'm going to go up to 3 and down to negative 3. And then uh, there's no vertical shift in this, so I can go ahead and graph my function. Remember, sine begins from the midline. We're not starting from the y-axis, though, because that original point has been phase shifted, uh, pi over 2 to the right. So that's where that first original point would be. Uh, the graph would then continue up in the sine graph back to the midline. It would uh, go low next and then finish back where you start. And to show just one period of this, I'm just going to connect those points. Uh, try not to draw over your numbers if you can, and then uh, I'll add arrows to show this graph continues. So um, that's one period. Now, of course, this graph does continue in both directions, and so eventually it would cross the y-axis at some point again. Um, but I don't really care, to be honest, where it crosses. Uh, if, if you do care and to be more accurate, then go ahead and do that. But for us, I'm going to say that is one period of our sine graph phase shifted uh, pi over 2 to the right.